Hey everybody, in this video, I'm going over the three key ideas from The Brain That Changes Itself by Dr. Norman Doidge. And just a quick overview, this book is all about neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the amazing power of our brains to change and adapt. This means learning, this means bouncing back after a brain injury, this means developing new skills. This is the science that makes it possible to have new technologies where we now have implants for the blind to see and the deaf to hear. This is the power of neuroplasticity and it is amazing. And key idea number one is that if you should ever suffer a brain injury, keep practicing, keep doing exercises long after any recommended period of a few weeks. Because it turns out that what appeared to be a plateau in someone's development where they leveled off after rehab is actually a period of consolidation. There's apparent progress where you can see it in some sort of outcome, some sort of measure, but then there's internal progress where things are changing in the brain and that's adapting and changing over time, but we're not seeing those results right away. That is a time to keep practicing and keep pushing. And this is based on the research of Dr. Paul Bach E. Rita. He is one of the godfathers of neuroplasticity. His article back in 1969, almost 50 years ago, was foundational to the understanding of neuroplasticity. It was published in Nature. And in that article, he explained how sensors on the skin could actually become a substitute for the sensory experience of the retina in people's eyes. Think about that for a second. What that means is that he found a way to project images onto the skin and for people to recognize that the same way that they had been sensing light hitting their retina for so long. This all goes to show that our brains have enormous abilities to change and adapt. Our neuroplasticity is amazing and we should keep pushing it and never assume that we have hit a limit with our neuroplasticity. Key idea number two is that we can actually open up new skills by treating the deficits in our brain. Because our brain has so many networks that are linked together, and when we hit a part of our brain's function that is weak, when we're trying to do something with that weaker area, it draws on more energy and may affect other parts of our brain, then we must build up those weaknesses and that will unlock new skills for us. One example that Dr. Deutsch gives is a very, very skilled lawyer who struggled in the courtroom with a deficit in speech. And when that lawyer did exercises to develop the Broca's area of the brain, a part that affects pronunciation, the lawyer then was able to speak without having to devote so much energy to that part of the brain for pronunciation and devote more energy to thinking and went on to have an extremely successful career in the courtroom. This lawyer worked with Barbara Aerosmith, founder of the Aerosmith Approach. Barbara Aerosmith was inspired by research out of UC Berkeley that I'll put down in the description for this video. That research showed that rats that were exposed to a more stimulating environment were actually developing heavier brains with greater neurotransmitters. And that inspired Barbara Aerosmith to think that maybe with some environmental stimulation, the brain itself could be changed. From there, Barbara Aerosmith went on to develop an amazing approach that has changed the lives of many people by addressing deficits in brain function to open up new skills. Key idea number three is that the human brain is an open system. We as human beings are constantly affected by the world around us. Those things change our brains and our brain function, and then that changes the way that we go about interacting with the world. It's an amazing feedback loop that we have, and we are constantly adapting. When I think of myself, my ancestors, the brain that I have inherited comes from farmers. I've never done any farming in my life, but my brain can adapt to the new tasks of my life in the modern world because that's how the human brain works. It's not the same for a lot of animals. Animals have an amazing ability when they are born to take up a task right away. The day a horse is born, that horse can go out and run. It takes a human being a long time to develop to the point where we can run, but our brains are much more adaptable. The horse is very set. It has instinctual things, it can get up and run, and that's the kind of thing that a horse's brain is well suited to. But a human, we can get up, we can run, we can learn new things, we can become farmers, or we can work with computers, or we can make videos, we can do anything with these amazing adaptable brains that we have, with this open system of a brain that we have. If you have any questions about neuroplasticity or this book, I'd love to hear about it, I'd love to talk about it. Let me know down in the comments. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe I'll catch you next time.